Good evening, everybody. Happy Friday to everyone out there. Welcome to the Chain Movers podcast. As usual, I'll be your host. And back, <laughs> back again. Another one. My little buddy, Wheels. Welcome, welcome back, Wheels. Oh, here's the to another Friday. Hey. Here's to another Friday. Let's, uh... It was a frosty Friday this morning, Wheels. Cold, cold, cold. Brisk. We're coming back onto winter here. Felt like minus 10, I believe. Really? Yeah, it was minus four. Felt Ooh. like minus ten. Dang, <clears throat> that's cold. Yeah, football weather. It is. It <laughs> is. Yeah, you can tell uh, high school playoffs are right around the corner with Ooh. weather like this. So and a couple of uh, buys. A couple for the, buys for the Lloyd Minster teams. Yeah, they get to rest and uh, nice. hang out and get ready for their opponents, which both of those games are happening tonight. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else were you up to this week? You know what? Not a whole, uh, not a whole bunch. You know, watch the Thursday nighter. Not much of a. Yeah, it wasn't real entertaining. <laughs> no, it uh, sure wasn't. No, no, it it wasn't great. Um, but yeah, we watched uh, the obviously the Monday nighter when uh, the Titans beat the Bills and. Everybody lost a whole bunch of money, <laughs> myself included. Uh, yeah, broke but, my parlay there a little bit. Wheels, but that's life. Yeah, and the NHL uh, back in the swing of things, and a few surprises. And full swing, full swing. Wheels, first um, week in the books. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you're training. I understand. I am training this week, as well. but let's get to at the end of the show. I want to talk about that. Sure. I, I think what you're doing is pretty neat. So cool. Sounds I, good. I definitely want to touch on that. But uh, yeah, let's get at our wheel. So Wednesday's show, uh, we were talking about the Raptors and and how unimpressive they were in their season opener. Um, yes. They had like 51 points at the end of the third quarter or something. Um, they're over under this year. We weren't sure what it was. Um, so just to clarify for everybody out there, it's 36 and a half. Is there over under? They won 27 games last year, and I don't think that roster that they have this year is going to improve by nine games. What do you think, Wheels? Ten games. They would need to win ten more games in order to hit the over. So right. Um, do they have more games this no, year? Eighty-two. Same thing. Yep. Yeah. yeah, eighty-two games. Um, they granted they were winning tonight. They were beating the Celtics. So. Um, they were up by like eight or something last time I checked. But. Well, for them to get that over, they're going to have to play a team game. Um, they cannot do it based on one guy. No. Um, so and I would argue they had a downgrade at point guard going from Lowry to Dragic, which I think everyone would agree with. For sure. Lowry yeah. is twice a point guard Goran Dragic ever was or will be. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that's just facts. Yeah. Um, Dragic particularly doesn't even want to be there. He was hoping it was more of a sign and trade, so he was hoping <clears throat> to go from Toronto to Dallas. That didn't happen. Right. Kind of made it public that he didn't want to be there. Yeah. But... Um, I, I think maybe the city's growing on him a little bit now, so yeah, well, um, he's settling in. But uh, they lost. Uh, who else did they lose at center? Because now they got Kem Birch as their starting center. Oh, uh, Gasol, left, Gasol, right? Yes, yes. Uh, who? There's another guy. I mean, Gasol's there. probably arguably a Hall of Famer, for sure. You know, for sure. Um, he might not be a first ballot slam dunk guy, but <laughs> nope. you know. But I, I think there could be a case made there that, and now you got Cam Birch and Chris Boucher playing center. Yeah, they. <sighs> Nick Nurse is a good coach, but seeing I'm not a Nick fan. Oh no, no. I think he's a great. I think he's a good coach. I think I think he can get kind of the best out of those guys. Yeah. But, um. You know, two, they are fairly young again, right? They don't really have a They are whole, quite young, yeah. They don't have a whole bunch of veteran leadership there, mm -mm. like that Kyle Lowry would have brought before. Drogic would be your oldest guy probably on the roster, and I think he's 35, Yeah, I believe. I don't really know too much about Lauren Drogic, but I don't think he's a leader as much as Kyle Lowry oh, would have. no, no, no. <laughs> 
Kyle put his body on so, the line. Yeah. He, he, and he loved Toronto, right? Yeah. Like he, Toronto was, that was his team, arguably. After DeMar left, it was his team. And, yeah. And well, I would say, but dare to say, uh, go down as the greatest Raptor of all time. Oh, yeah, that's a... To that's, date, That's right? a no-brainer, I yeah. think. Um, yeah, Kyle's heart and soul, right? I mean, he brought them basically that those champions, that championship. Yeah, he was the um, one constant, in constant that, on that team yeah. that, uh, you know, when they finally inked Kawhi to that one year, it's like, okay, we got a shot here, right? Right. So, you know, and then it went downhill from there, unfortunately. But yeah. that's typically what happens is... You win a title and then start the rebuild. You yeah. know, that's that's yeah. how it works. So yeah. um but yeah, they won twenty seven last year, which I I think I said they won like forty games, but they weren't anywhere near close to that. Oh and uh yeah, I I don't think they're gonna win twenty seven this year. No, I would I would probably bet the under on that guy. Yeah, if, yeah. if uh, you wanna be safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I, I would agree a hundred percent with that statement. Yeah. Yeah, overs just that's too much. I think absolutely ten, ten games. Yeah, mm. and their team, their team is worse. Like no doubt about it. Um, I mean, they drafted Scotty Barnes, which I think was a weird pick. Um, it wasn't the consensus pick that everybody thought Toronto should take, right? Right. Um, so I mean, and he was playing well tonight. Um, so for a rookie, he could be the real deal, but. Again, you need more than one guy to, to win, especially in the NBA with all these super teams popping up all over the place, right? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Like, crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to clear all that up because we were throwing numbers out, and I wasn't sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I was wrong. But now we're right. This is factual. So, yeah. Uh, another thing we were talking about, Wheels, when was the last time a non-QB won the NFL MVP? Because we were discussing Derrick Henry Uh and how dominant he is. Mm -hmm. And he's my lead to win the MVP so far this year. Okay. Dude's unreal. Mm -hmm. Um, And I thought it hadn't been done for a long, long time. And it hasn't been as long as you might think. Any guesses? On the year? Year and player. Year and player? Yeah. That's a tough one. Let's say 2015 and player? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to say it's probably a running back. It was? Um... <laughs> Just put you on the who spot is the, here. Who is, the, uh, who is the other Titans running back back in the day? Uh, Some Eddie George. Eddie George. That might be. That might even be longer. That might be too soon for Eddie. Yeah, I think Eddie was like early two thousands. Early two thousands. Yeah. Okay. And then they had Chris Johnson, who was also a good running back. Oh, it might actually. You know what? It could be Chris Johnson. So you're going twenty fifteen, Chris, Chris Johnson. Sure, let's do that. Wrong, on both counts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> twenty twelve, Adrian Peterson was the last non QB to win the MVP. Twenty twelve. Yeah. Nine years. I'm surprised it was that <laughs> short of a time ago, though. Like, it seems like it's been forever, right? And nobody else is even in the conversation. That was um, 2012? Yeah. Oh. And then that seems like yesterday that... 2006, LaDainian Tomlinson won it. 2006. That was the year I think he punched in, like, 23 touchdowns. Oh, yeah, that was wild. 2005. <laughs> so, back-to-back years of running back won it. No 05, Sean Alexander, former Seahawk great, won it. Oh, okay. And here's a weird one for you, Wheels. 1982, Mark Mosley, a kicker, won the MVP in the NFL how do you win MVP as a kicker? I don't know, man. The 82 must have been a rough year for talent. Place did he, kicker. Did he go 100% of his kicks? Don't know. I didn't even look into it much. I was so, <laughs> I was so flabbergasted that I, I was... Am I reading this right? And I checked multiple sources because I'm like, Wikipedia could be messing with me here. Yeah, 1982. Mark Mosley. 
we should probably check up those stats to see. He must have really if, shot the lights off. Like, he's got to be 100%. <laughs> There's no way. Like, Unreal. A kicker. I, I didn't think that would literally ever happen, but it has already happened. So, he must have kicked a couple 70 yarders. He must have just kicked the <laughs> shit right out of everything, Wheels. Kicked the leather right off that ball. That's unbelievable. That's crazy, eh? Hmm. I thought it was pretty wild. I do um, remember Adrian Peterson, though. He was at that year. Was that the year he came back from his ACL tear? No. That, that was, was like 18, 17, yeah. 18. Yeah. Because okay. this was when he was like chasing what's his name's all time leading rushing like Barry Sanders or Emmett Smith uh M Emmett yeah like he, yeah Emmett Smith has a record because yeah. he almost broke the all time rushing. rushing record he was only a couple like I think a hundred yards away or something oh okay are you talking about a season or total season season oh uh because doesn't doesn't another Viking have that I think he played for the Rams that season the St. Louis Rams oh, okay uh why well, can't I remember his name it's not so bad. I think he has, what, 20, 2,108 yards yeah. is the record? In the yeah. Super Bowl. Well, I can't remember his name. doesn't matter. Um, that was the year he came back after his ACL tear. Right. That he was chasing that record. Oh, okay. Um, so okay. 2012, I don't really remember AP's 2012 season, but apparently it was good. Well, so, it had to be good. I mean, the dude yeah. is good. There's no doubt about it. But, yeah, so that was the last non-QB to win the MVP. Holy so. mackerel. But I, Derrick Henry keeps scoring three touchdowns a weekend. Um, how do you not give it to the guy? Right? <laughs> Regardless of what happens, I mean, you typically give it to a winning team's player, but, um, you know, I, I said Lacey was my co-host Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So um, I said to her, I said, I just hope Tennessee wins the Super Bowl because then you have no choice but to give it to Derrick Henry. <laughs> You have no yeah. choice. Yeah. Well, he probably deserves it for sure. Like, I mean, he's been he's, unreal. He's obviously because their record's three and three. They are four, four and, and two. two. So at the end of the day, right? He's probably won all four of those games for them. Oh and yeah. The two that they've lost probably just <laughs> turning the ball over from Tannehill. Right? Yeah. It, so. well, I was gonna say it, the cause of victory was not Ryan Tannehill. Oh, so right. You know, I mean, Tannehill is that game manager QB, right? And, yeah. And, uh, but Derrick Henry's really where the rubber meets the road. You know, I mean, he's so good. Like, just so good. But, um, when you were here last, or on Monday, Wheels, you, uh, you mentioned a documentary on Netflix, uh, yes. containing Justin Fields. Uh huh. You were going to bring that name back to us. That was a little bit of homework you had. Did yep. you, did you remember to track that down? I did. I did. Okay. Well, why don't you tell us what it is? So I do, it's, uh, on Netflix. It's, called QB1 Beyond the Light. Okay. And yeah, it's I think they basically there's a season 1, season 2, season 3. I believe Justin Fields is season 2. Okay. Um and just from memory just because I think they kind of go to three high school QBs and they kind of they watch them for the full year. Okay. And then they kind of tell you like at the end, you know, where they go, mm -hmm. where they sign in college, things like that. And so, yeah, I believe Justin Fields, um, his documentary is season two on QB1, Beyond the Lights on Netflix. Um, Highly recommended by, I, by yourself. I mean, I'm a huge sports fan, so I enjoy documentaries and yep. seeing family dynamic, you know. Yeah, how they grew up. The sports, you know, all things stuff, like right? that. Um, I think it kind of tells a little bit more of a story. For and, sure. And yeah. then you get to watch him, and then obviously this is a while ago, so he's right. obviously done his college career, yeah. but then now in the NFL. Um, but when I watched the documentary, he was still in college. Oh, okay. That was about okay. a year or two ago. Oh, okay, okay. So it's, is it still uh, on there, do you know? It is, Okay. Yes. okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's a good documentary. I would recommend it to anybody that wants to maybe just dive in and see where maybe even those other couple of quarterbacks are. Maybe yeah. they're... 
done now, but they could still be in high school, and we're, uh, some might be in the NFL. We're getting to that <laughs> weather where, you know, you can pop open a documentary <laughs> like this on a Friday yep. and uh, crawl off your couch on a Sunday, and <laughs> uh, you, you watch the whole thing, right? Yeah. So, so that's QB1, Beyond the Lights, comes two thumbs up, recommended by Wheels. So, yep, it is um, good. Check it out if you get a chance. Uh, Thursday Nighter Wheels, let's uh, let's touch on it. It was a bit of a quiet game. Uh, Browns took it 17-14. I don't think there was ever really any surprise. Um, okay. The Browns were banged up, granted. Mm-hmm. Um, Broncos lost four straight, too. Um, so Browns are now 4-3. and three. Broncos are 3-4. and four. Um, De Ernest Johnson... Rookie running back for Cleveland. No, not a rookie. Sorry, this is his second year. Um, he started for Cleveland due to Nick Chubb out yep. to, or, and uh, Kareem Hunt out. Mm-hmm. Uh, 22, 146, and a touchdown. Dude lit it up. Yeah, that's good. Man, yards. runs hard <laughs> and jump cuts. Is he a he, big fella? He's not huge. Not massive? No, okay. no but fast. Nice. Holy lightning. Um, he definitely turned some heads. He made the most of his opportunity, I guess. Let's put it that way. So, uh, For sure. Dude was unreal. Um, and case, the Broncos have a good, a decent They defense. looked horrible. Okay. Um, but they lost Vaughn Miller in that game as well, which yeah, okay. makes a pretty big difference. I don't care who the team is. You lose a guy of Vaughn Miller's quality. It changes things, right? Yes. So, and they lost him relatively early, I think, like five minutes into the second quarter or something. Yes. He come up, yes. um, got rolled up on or something. It didn't look very good no, ankle, from what I've right? seen. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> no word on how long he'll be out. But uh, <clears throat> Case Keenum filling in for Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, looked good as well, I thought. He went 21 to 33 for 199 and a touchdown. It was all he needed. That was all they needed him to do. Um, but he looked in control of the offense, didn't turn the ball over, not once. Rushed for that key fourth down conversion. Yeah, really. Yep. On like the two, he got to like the two, two yard, yard line, line, right? But they could still get a first without scoring. And he picked up the first. And I thought Case Keenum looked good in that game. Yeah, I know I was listening in on maybe, was it Sports Center or Sportsnet? Um, you know, and uh, I think it was Jabari Greer said, well, I think Case Keenum looked all right, but in the defense of Denver, they said that uh, um, they only hurried him about five times. Yeah, they made and, him, they made his life pretty easy. And uh, I think it was out of uh, yeah, I think it was Jabari Greer. He says, "If I got hurried five times, I would also be successful against this sure. Denver Bronco team." Yeah, and so yeah, I mean. Say as you will, but yeah, um, Case Keenum looked good, and as long as you don't turn the ball over, you win games. Definitely <laughs> one of the more serviceable backups, I would say, in the NFL. For sure. Uh, I didn't even know Case Keenum was a backup there, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> and then once the Baker injury came out, it's yeah. like, oh, that's where Case Keenum is, right? And, and he played well. Um, I mean, he's not a young guy. He's a vet, right? Yeah. So he, uh, he got the job done for him. If they were probably playing – any other team, it probably wouldn't have been that easy. But right. I mean, with the exception of the Jags or the Jets <laughs> or someone like that, right? Yeah. But um, Teddy Bridgewater kind of playing on a bum leg in this game. He went twenty three of thirty three, one hundred eighty seven yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Um, yeah, Teddy. Well, Teddy got rushed a lot. He yes. he was on one leg. Um, Denver's O line just isn't very good. Yeah, they're and, struggling. Oh. Oof. They're in trouble. Struggling's putting it kindly, wheels. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, just not, not an overly impressive outing for the Broncos. They're three and four now. Like I said, they've lost four straight. Um, I think it's gonna be a long season for Denver fans. Um, yeah, yeah, they come out three and zero, oh, but they played three garbage teams to open their season, and I think you can attribute those victories to those crappy teams that they played to open the season. Yeah, so for sure. Other than that, not a lot there. Wheels. Um, yeah, it was kind of a, a kind of a boring game, mm-hmm. um, but it was it was a hard hitting kind of smash mouth game. A lot of running, you know, that kind of stuff, and a lot of flash and dash. But <laughs> uh, yeah, the Ernest Johnson definitely the star in that game. Looked nice. very good. So, uh, wheels. It's time for everybody's favorite Friday segment. 
Ooh. Fantasy booms and busts. Okay. We get rave reviews on this. <laughs> Everyone loves it. Mm, there you go. Good idea. I needed a sip of coffee too. Um, <laughs> so let's get right into her wheels. I'm going to go through some booms and busts. You can agree. You can disagree. You can subtract. You can add. You can do whatever you like. Sure. Okay. Sure. So let's start at the quarterback position. Everybody's favorite. Okay. Um, I'm not going to tell you to start Lamar Jackson. <laughs> You're going to start Lamar Jackson regardless of what I tell you. So we like to dive a little deeper. You know, oh. I'm not going to give you the obvious. That's that's too easy. Um, so we like to look around and find a little more obscure. Okay. A diamond in the rough, if you will. Okay. So... Uh, for booms this week, wheels, I got Sammy Darnold versus the Giants. You like him? I would have to agree you with would... you on that one. The uh, Giants are not very good. That's... Sam Darnold has uh, shown that he can play with some of the best teams mm -hmm. uh, offensively, like offense versus defense. Um, so... I would have to agree with you on that one. That's a check mark, Wheels. Yeah, we both they, agree. They uh, and quick receivers too, right? So yeah, those DJ uh, Moore, Robbie Anderson. Yeah, yeah, those guys can beat you down downfield. So Chuba, Chuba Hubbard, is yeah. there as well. Yeah, hopefully uh, can score another Canadian touchdown. Maybe he can for have us. two TDs this game. Oh, Giants are weak, so hopefully let's, he can punch him in. Let's see what happens. Go get him, Chuba. <laughs> Uh, my next boom wheels, Jameis versus the Seahawks. Jameis Winston. Saints got the Seahawks on our Monday night game. Seattle's right. defense is bad. Yeah, well, the... S Statistically one of the worst in the NFL. Yeah. For and, yards. Yeah, and uh, I know that uh, the Steelers just got by him last week. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that probably New Orleans probably has a little bit better... Maybe um, a little bit better. Maybe the same kind of offense as Pittsburgh. Depends which week you catch uh, Jameis yeah. on, right? I mean, yeah, Jameis has thrown five TDs yeah. week one and then yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you never it's, know. It's a but... roller coaster watching that team this year. Yeah. and uh, But against, I mean, the Seahawks, they're, yeah, they are beat up even on the offensive side, right? And if you can't get those guys off the field, the defense – Jameis might have a heyday. Could be a long night for the Seattle defense. So yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm not a Jameis fan. Uh, I I don't believe Jameis is the solution in New Orleans. <laughs> no. Um, but I think you could do a lot worse than Jameis this week. So yes, if he's available and your QB is out, because with all the buys this week, I I know my team's suffering. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and that can happen. In the running back position, I have Rashad Penny, who plays for Seattle. And I'm just hoping he comes off the IR in time to show up and play this game. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm hooped. So, oh no, yeah, not looking good from an RB perspective for Chad's team this week. But uh, so, you like Jameis Wheels? You, I, you think he could go off this week? I do. Okay, I, I, I like that pick as that's, well. That's that's uh, two out of three. And my last one, Matty Ryan versus the Dolphins. Pure, yeah. purely matchup based. Miami is garbage and. So is Atlanta, but they're not quite as bad as Miami. Yeah, well, and I would I know that we talked about that kind of quickly off air about uh, Matt or mm -hmm. the Atlanta Dolphins game, and so I feel like yeah, you know what, Matt Ryan is fairly consistent yeah. usually, um, and, and they throw uh, the ball a ton in that offense. Yes, they just don't run it very often. No, right? and so. so uh, and Miami's not very good against the pass. They're not good at anything. Yeah. So um, it's just not very good. Yeah, I think we might have to mark that one up for a three for three. That's a three. That's a three ring. A three for. Ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> uh, bust this week, wheels. I'm busting Ryan Tannehill against the Chiefs. Don't like him. As you shouldn't, though. Like. So that's an agreement. Yeah. Um, I mean. You just need to pass the ball off to Derrick Henry. Henry. Yep. It's not uh, it's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, KC, same thing, right? You keep Mahomes off the yeah off the field. Um, well, really, Tennessee can beat anybody if they keep the yes. their offense off the field. Yeah, with their possession and I mean running the ball that much, geez, you, you got to wonder if that's not their game plan is to just wear down the opposition D. Yep. To the point where they can barely breathe by the, <laughs> the third quarter, yeah. right? Because I mean, imagine trying to hit Derrick Henry all night, and uh, hey, it's working. They're oh. four and two, and yeah, I, I don't hate them to go in there and beat the Chiefs this weekend. So. No, and just hopefully, yeah, hopefully Tannehill just doesn't uh, turn the ball over. Yeah, just don't screw it up, Brian. Yeah. That's all you gotta do. Just... But I, I don't like him this week. Nope. Um, okay, that's that's one for one wheels. Uh, Jalen Hurts versus the Raiders. The Raiders looked good last weekend with their new coach, and yes. I, I think they're going to look good again this weekend because Philly is also not very good. Yeah, they are not. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to, again, agree with you on that one. Um, Jalen Hurts, he might have a day running, but... Yeah, he likes to run. Um, but throwing, probably not. Um, what did he have last week against... Uh, was it the box? It was the box. Yeah, they got clapped. They got they got clapped, but he only he had, had some garbage time. He he only had like a hundred and I think he only had like a hundred and eighty yards through the air. Yeah, yeah, and, and he like, ran for two touchdowns and, in garbage time. Right? And 80, 80 of them were half like halftime. Yeah, yeah, he didn't. So it wasn't very good. So didn't play very well. Um, and, and, and I think even less than fifty percent passing. That could be. That could be. I forget his stat line. It wasn't very week. nice. No. So no, he hasn't been very good this year, but in fairness, the entire Philly team hasn't been very good this year. So no, um, but it sounds like we're in agreement on that one yep. as well. Wheels, yeah. Um, and my last bust, Geno Smith versus the Saints. <laughs> you got a, a boom bust on, on one side and a bust on the I'm other. Taking <laughs> Jameis over Geno. That's my pick. I uh, this is, like you said, the Saints D is pretty decent. Um, yeah. Well, so is the Steelers, granted, but uh, yeah, I just I don't believe Geno's the guy. You know, I can he get you through a half of football? You know, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, he could do that. But as far as a starter and take you, you know, the full sixty minutes and take you to a win, the Saints aren't great, but they're better in Seattle, unfortunately. Yeah, and so. they, uh, if Geno can't get the ball to those other. Two re- receivers, lock it, and and they've been quiet since Russ left. Oh, right? so. for sure. So you know what? I think you know that's a ding, ding, ding on the old <laughs> six for six there. Boy, I that think. makes life easy. <laughs> uh, let's move. QBs. Let's move over to the running backs wheels. Okay, my booms this week: uh, Damian Harris, New York Pat, or <laughs> New York Pats, the uh, New England Patriots back against the Jets. I like him this week. Yeah, they. Uh, I don't know a lot about the uh, Patriots' run game, but I it's know always that. a gamble. I do it, know it, that it, it is. Yeah, but Brandon Bolden is hurt this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the Jets are a dumpster fire. <laughs> so <laughs> this one is purely matchup based as well. Yeah. Well, and you know what? Uh, then you know what? If that's the case, I guess I would probably have to agree because. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the Jets before, and they're not very good. And uh, horrid. Um, at the end of the day, yeah, he may have a day, and let's see where it goes. I, I like him this week. Uh, James Conner against the Texans. Arizona Cardinal. Yes, yes. I think what's going to happen here is the Cards are probably going to jump out to about a 28 nothing lead after the first <laughs> quarter. And then they're just going to hand the ball off. To James Conner. Hey. He'll probably split carries. Yeah. But I think he'll rip off a couple big ones against the Texans. And it's just going to be a free-for-all. That's 17.5 point spread in that game. <laughs> that's that's probably being generous. That's big. <laughs> the uh, Cardinals are going to kill them. Yeah. they. Um, well, James Conner was a Steeler. Who I, he was? Who, who I do watch religiously on Sundays. So. Had some trouble staying healthy in Pittsburgh. He did, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know what, though? He can, at the end of the day, too, though, he can rip off some runs. So How do you not pull for the guy? He had, uh, yeah, can- he had cancer. Did he have uh, Hodgkin's? Yeah, lymphoma, yeah, I think. So. Yeah, 
I feel so like the dude almost died and then made his comeback and, and yeah. came to the NFL Crushing and him. you know so I mean how do you not like him yeah um, and he's talented I mean don't get me wrong I, I like him so that whole Cardinals team is talented I, I think you could do a lot worse than Connor this weekend yes so. <laughs> for sure uh, if by some chance he's not on a team in your fantasy league get out there and claim him ASAP. <laughs> Um, Pick him up now. <laughs> like five minutes ago. Uh, Jonathan Taylor against the 49ers. Indianapolis Colts running back. He's been on a tear lately. Um, what do you have? 140 last week and 120 the week before that. Now the 49ers defense is respectable. But I... 49ers four-point favorites in this game. I like Indy to go in and win that game. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, they. Um, yeah, we talked about that off air too with what we think is the Colts that will. I think we even talked about it a little bit on air. Oh, yeah. How true. About how the Colts are better than two and four, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I would say look for him to do another 100 plus. I, I think so. Yeah. Get a couple TDs, maybe one, two, and. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, pick him up too, I think. Wheels agrees with the wizard. Jeez. <laughs> How do you argue? How many with... booms and busts are you good at? Because <laughs> if we're agreeing on all of these, holy. Well, let's check out the bust side of the, okay. of the running back position, Wheels. Uh, I'm busting Joe Mixon against the Ravens this week. Cincinnati running back. Um, Mixon has been good the past couple weeks. Um, but again... I like Baltimore to handle the Bengals, and I think the Bengals are going to be chasing points. So mm. that's going to lead me to believe that Joe might not get, you know, his usual 20 to 25 carries. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bust him this week. That game's in Baltimore? It is in Baltimore, I believe, yes. Mm. Yeah, they'll... Since he'll probably put up a nice little fight, yes. I think. But, yeah, that would probably be... A... Yeah, Baltimore will probably put up some points against that defense. I think so. I think um, so. The Bengals are good. They're not Ravens good though. Yeah, is kind of where I stand on that game. Yeah, and I don't like. I don't particularly like either team, but the Bengals are building something around Burrow and Chase. Mm -hmm. They've looked decent this year. They haven't been dominant, but they've looked decent. Yeah. Um. Whereas Baltimore has looked dominant at times. Yeah. And that's the difference, I'd say, between the two teams right now. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. I'm Boston Joey Mixon, Wheels. I uh, Let's put another check mark. Wheels agrees. Cha-ching. Uh, Antonio Gibson, running back for Washington against the Packers. Kind of the exact same situation I just explained with uh, Cincinnati and Baltimore. That's my reasoning for Boston Gibson. Yeah, there's going to be... Yeah, Washington's not going to win that game, and mm -hmm. they'll be chasing Aaron Rodgers from <laughs> from uh, quarter one to quarter four, <laughs> and yeah, and he's not going to get a lot of touches. Um, I guess you never know. They, I think, uh, out of the two backs in Washington, I would say McKissick is probably the guy to start this week. He's their pass catching. Okay, yeah, back right, um, chasing points like that, which I I think they will. Um, those guys get more action typically than, than the actual uh, runner. Yeah, so I would I would agree with that. That's kind of where I'm at. And Miles Sanders busting him against the Raiders. Don't like him this week. I haven't liked him all year, so it made it really easy. But <laughs> he's had a horrible season, and he's with Philly. He right? is with Philly. That's correct. Yeah. Well, yeah. When you can't uh, throw the ball, when you can't run the ball going to be a little tough makes, for the Eagles. Makes for a long day. Yep. Yeah, and Jalen would rather run himself. So. I've, I've coached teams like that where they, <laughs> they, they can't run the ball and they can't throw the ball, <laughs> and it makes for some really long days. But, uh, <laughs> such is life. Me and Wheels are in 100% agreement so far. Um, let's move over to the receivers, Wheels. Uh, booms, Henry Ruggs against Philly. Oh, you like rugs too. Uh, we, I know you do. We talked about it on Monday. We did. I know you <laughs> like this choice. Yeah, he uh yeah, he is fast. 
Cha-ching. And uh, yeah, the Philadelphia cornerbacks, they are, well, they are beat up on cornerbacks. They, are they always not? are. Every year they are. Yeah, so they'll, yeah. He, I've never seen the, seen a team that loses more DBs than the Eagles. Yeah, like I don't I don't understand it, but on Mon- on Sunday he had what against the Denver Broncos one thirty. You'd have to look that up. I don't know a hundred percent wheels what he had for a stat line. Okay. But, um, yeah, you could probably put him for almost even over one fifty this. I I, this I like him definitely week. over a hundred and a <laughs> touchdown. Yeah, I I think he'll be just fine against the Eagles. Uh, for sure. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, where are we going to go now? Uh, Anderson versus the Giants. Who do the Giants play this week, Wheels? The Giants? Oh, Panthers. Play the Panthers, yes. Why do I have... Oh, receivers. Yeah, sorry, Robbie Anderson. Yeah. Robbie Anderson. He's had a relatively quiet season, but okay. I, I like him against the Giants because the Giants are bad. And I think... Sammy D is going to have all kinds of time to spread the ball around. And mm-hmm. uh, Anderson has been coming alive a little bit over the past couple of weeks. He had a touchdown last week, which is a good sign. Perfect. Um, of course, he's on my fantasy team, so he's been quiet for the first five <laughs> weeks. <laughs> yep. But, uh, yeah, I, I like him this week, and I think he's going to go off wheels. Yep. Let's put that one on the You like that mark. one too, eh? Yep. Okay. And Deontay Harris from the Saints, I like him to uh, have a big day against the Hawks. He's the number one guy in New Orleans until Michael Thomas gets back, which I believe is next week, I think, is when Thomas comes back. Okay. So until then, Deontay is going to continue to get the bulk of the receiving work, Yes. I think. And uh, I like him against that poor Seahawks secondary. Yep, you just got to stay away from the middle linebackers on uh, Seattle. Yes. So as long as Bobby you're... Wagner, if you can stay away from yep. Bobby Wagner, you're fine. Yep. So stretch the field, yep. and he should have a heyday. Dude's got wheels. So <laughs> uh, bust some Boston Michael Pittman Jr. against the 49ers. He has been uh, the number one receiving target for Indy, um, but I think the 49ers have good enough DBs to lock him up. So. I think Carson's going to have to go elsewhere. And also, like I said, I like Jonathan Taylor. So I don't yeah. like Pittman this weekend. Yeah. And you said that. So with Jonathan Taylor. So, um, yeah, if he has a big day, they don't really need to throw it there that way. Um, and, uh, yeah, they'll, uh, it'll, I think that'll be a tight game and a low scoring one. I too, would agree. So. Yeah. I think it will, but I like Indy to, 20, to win 24 21 yeah maybe. i think it's gonna be a, a smash mouth game yeah yeah, yeah i agree 100 percent. so so uh dun, 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 dun. aj green is a bust don't like him this week they play the jags so you think everyone might go off but i think it's going to be the d hop show i think aj is going to have a quiet weekend yeah, well, and you even uh, had a bust on, or did you have bust on James Conner? Boom on James Conner. I had a boom, boom on James so, Conner. Same thing, right? Um, yeah, DeAndre being the number one target, James Conner having a big day. It's probably just not going to be his day. I, I think AJ is going to be uh, hanging out, you know, just kind of watching, <laughs> watching everybody have some fun. So that's what I think. Yeah. And uh, last guy, this one might come as a bit of a surprise to you, Wheels. Okay. Marquise Brown, the lead receiver in Baltimore um, against the Bengals. Okay. I think the Bengals are going to be able to lock him up. Ooh, this might be our first disagreeance, mm-hmm. Chad. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think, Wheels? Yeah, this might be our first disagreeance, I think. Okay. But in saying that... Um, you know, I, and now did Marquise Brown, did he get drafted by the Ravens? Yes. Okay. Cause I had this conversation with somebody the I'm other sure day he did. and I didn't realize, like, I thought he came from somewhere, No, nope. but no, I don't think so. not. Um, but where he played his college ball and stuff, I couldn't tell you that off the top of my head. No, neither do I. I don't know that either. Um, but he is good. 
he is very good. And that's why I think I might have to disagree with you there. Okay, I think he, I think he might have a big day. Okay. Let's. Uh, I'm maybe, putting an X on that one, Wheels. Let's uh, let's bring that. We'll. Let's, I'll have to maybe listen to the Monday podcast to see who ate their words on that. Well, one. you know what? Maybe, <laughs> maybe you can come back Monday. And, hey, uh, you never know. And we can belittle all your picks. <laughs> How's, what do you think of that? Maybe we should have some disagreements here just so that we can have something to talk about on that, Monday. That's true. Yeah, maybe we should. Maybe we'll disagree about some of the some of the games though. Oh, here we go. You yeah. know, so uh, tight ends wheels. I'm booming Hunter Henry Pats over the Jets this week. Oh, that's a no brainer. Slam dunk. <laughs> no brainer. Kyle Pitts, tight end for the Falcons against the Dolphins. I Dolphins would, are trash. I would say that's another. Thumbs up for... Oh, uh, this is easy, Wheels. Uh, agreeing. Uh, this one, yeah, I might get beat up a little bit over it. Oh, and maybe another <laughs> disagreement. Robert Tunyon, Green Bay against Washington, had a horrible year so far. <laughs> <laughs> He's been terrible. But I like him to break out in this game. Nice. What do you think of that? Well... Just because you said he's been horrible so far this Terrible. whole entire year. Terrible. I think I'm just going to say he's going to continue that just to make, okay. just to make this <laughs> a better show for uh, everybody. Quick note, Wheels <laughs> disagrees with Tanya. <laughs> I'm going to write that down so we have proof. Wheels disagrees. You know, you know, speaking of Green Bay, did you see that interview with... Tom Brady the other day? I did. Oh, God. Congrats. Did I laugh? <laughs> Congratulating Aaron Rodgers on being an owner of the Bears. Did you see the Bears Wikipedia page? I did. It was updated, and under owner, it said Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> so, no. Yes. Oh, yeah. man. So I thought that was pretty funny as well. I just um, couldn't believe the interviewer asking Tom Brady, well, what do you own, Tom? And yeah. I was, I was howling. And then he took a shot at the Jets. Yeah, <laughs> not the Jets. I'll just take the color green. <laughs> I'll just own the color green. He says so. Oh um, God, yeah, Tommy Brady. <laughs> that was priceless. It was good. <laughs> uh, bust wheels. Let's move over, move over to our tight end bust. Okay. Uh, I'm busting Kelsey this weekend. He's a little banged up, and he's playing a pretty decent defense against Tennessee. Yep, that's uh, you know what I'd have to agree with you on uh, that. And guy. I'm a I'm a Kelsey fan. I, yeah. I think he is the number one tight end in the league right now. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he's gonna have a big game against Tennessee. Yeah, I could uh, I could agree with you there. Okay. I think their wide receivers will have bigger games. I think. Okay. Uh, Tyreek Hill questionable for that game as well but i think he will play so oh, okay um dallas goddard philadelphia eagles against the raiders yeah too good a defense yeah. right there yeah i agree um and we're busting the eagles like it's going out of <laughs> style here so <laughs> hopefully we don't eat our words there's come. not one piece of the eagles i like this weekend <laughs> not one not a single piece. So um, let's just keep busting them while, while them. we're here. <laughs> just bursting those bubbles all over the place. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, kind of a no-brainer considering the Lions are playing the Rams, but Hawk has been good for the Lions this year. Mm -hmm. um, but they're playing the Rams. so And that is a very, very good it's defense. A pretty stout defense, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, you know what? I'm surprised that you didn't have Jared Goff maybe on your busts for well, the old... I think that's a no-brainer, isn't it? <laughs> hey, maybe the fire's been lit under him from Dan Quinn. Come on. Hey, you never know. They're 0-6. <laughs> <laughs> They're terrible. Well, Dan uh, Campbell, you mean. Or Dan, Dan Campbell, sorry, not yeah. Dan Quinn. Um, Who is Dan Quinn? Why do I... That's somebody. I, I'm pretty sure he's a coach somewhere else but atlanta is he the coach in atlanta might be i think he is yeah i don't know whatever somebody needs to yeah, the fire under Goff's ass it could be atlanta's <laughs> coach for all i care um but yeah he, he has looked uh how do i put this kindly 
Well, you what? don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse than mediocre wheels? Shitty. Yeah, that's golf. <laughs> that's golf this season. He's just been a bum. Just terrible. Um, it's about the best I can come up with. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take that. I like that <laughs> response. Uh, defenses, and then we'll close out our fantasy booms and bus wheels. Nice. Uh, booms, boom the bucks against the Bears this week. Bears offense is trash. Yeah, and as much as I've been hyping the QB1 <laughs> Netflix show. Yeah, it doesn't show, mean Fields is I, that good. I don't think Justin Fields is going to have a day on the field. So, yeah, we'll... Uh, well, I, I would have to agree with you on that one. Quick review of uh, Justin Fields' stats. I think he's thrown for one touchdown, and I don't think he's cracked 200 passing yards in a game. And that is going to be... And he's been playing for like four weeks now. He's and, been the starter. And that's going to be tough against a very, very potent... Oh, offense. yeah. Like Temple will <laughs> drop 45 on you, no problem, right? So either you keep up or you lose, and the Bears are going to lose. <laughs> So, there you go. Uh, Colts against 49ers. I like the Colts' defense in this game. Yeah, well, and on Monday we talked about how fast the Indianapolis Colts' um, uh, defense is, mm-hmm. um, and that's a problem for the 49ers' offense. I would say they're a problem for any offense, I would say. Uh, yeah. Defensively, Indiana, Indy can go toe-to-toe with most teams in the league. Yeah. It's offensively that they start to struggle a bit, right? But, right. Um, the 49ers ain't no screaming hell on the offensive side of the ball either. So No. Um, I'm not worried about Indy in this game. I like them. So. Yeah, you might uh, see a couple pick sixes maybe. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Panthers, I like their D against the Giants. There is not much to like about the New York Giants <laughs> offense, so let's just agree to disagree on that Sounds one. Sounds good, buddy. <laughs> uh, bust. I'm busting Washington against the Packers. I can't see why you would disagree with me on this, but Sorry. maybe oh, Washington yeah, yeah, against yeah. the Packers? Yeah, no. No, that's that's a slam dunk. Aaron Rodgers is going to be the new owner of the Washington <laughs> football team. Move over, Dan Snyder. <laughs> Here comes Aaron. <laughs> Uh, Bengals against Baltimore. Don't like the Bengals D this weekend. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't find any words that would tell me or the listeners otherwise. And the 49ers, I'm busting their defense against the Colts. Yep. Uh, yeah, I just think the Colts are just gonna. I think they're actually. This might be a game where it's. I think it's the Sunday nighter. But it might be a blowout. I believe it is. It might be a blowout. It could be. It could be. (laughs) Neither offense is super potent. But, yeah, I think if uh, somebody starts turning the ball over once or twice, it could get out of hand. So, um, you'll notice we had quite a bit of overlap this week. But we got four games. One, two, three. Three games that are above a 10-point spread. So I didn't really want to touch them too much because it's a no-brainer. You're not going to sit anybody off the Rams this week. They're playing the Lions. (laughs) Nope. You're not going to sit any of your Cardinals against the Texans. Granted, I did say I didn't like A.J. Green, but, I mean, well, your core guys, you're going to start. Yeah, the reason that you're busting A.J. Green is because you think... Everyone else is going to elevate, right? Hopkins is going to have a big game. Exactly. Connors is going to have a big game. Exactly. Not all three can have big games. No. Well, they could. (laughs) They could, I guess. It is the Texans. You never know. And Tampa, they're 12 and a half over Chicago. So, I mean, I don't don't want to go too deep into those games because it's kind of a no-brainer. You're going to start. If you got somebody on Tampa's offense, you're going to start them against the Bears. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. And we have six buys this week. Yeah, that's a lot. Oh. Tell yeah. me about it. Yeah, not many. It's too uh, many wheels. Yeah, not not many games on this Sunday. No, no, it's uh, it's going to be a, kind of a quiet Sunday. But on that note, wheels, we're going to take a little two second break for sure, and then we're going to come back and cover our NF- remaining NFL games that we haven't touched on. Okay, uh, we'll touch on the MLB playoffs. We will touch on a little bit of basketball, not a lot. Some NHL. A little bit of AJ I want to touch on. A little Alberta Jr. Sounds good. And, uh, and then I want to talk about your uh, your running that you have going on. Sounds so good. I want to get in depth on that. But For sure. On that note, just a two-second break and we'll be back.
And we're back, wheels. Perfect. It was that easy. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, let's get right into our NFL games. Uh, Panthers, Giants. I, I think we've kind of talked this one to death already, and the Panthers are only a three point favorite, which is shocking, I would say. <laughs> um, Saquon, Galladay, and Kadarius Tony all out for the Giants this week. Um, Giants have any chance of winning this game? I'm going to say no. But uh, <laughs> what do you think, Wheels? <coughs> well, yeah, we've already talked about how bad the Giants are. Mm -hmm. and uh, We've almost beat that horse to death. Yeah, and Carolina being that uh, Sam Darnold, I think, has rejuvenated mm -hmm. a little bit of his career mm -hmm. since getting traded there. Um, yeah, I don't think there's no reason for me to go against you on that one That's to a, that take would, the Giants. That would be absolutely bold. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you could. Use, let's stick with that word. Uh, <laughs> Bengals Ravens. Uh, Ravens five and one. Bengals four and two. Bengals go into Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore six and a half point favorite. You like them to cover this week? Wheels. Devonta Freeman starting a running back for Baltimore. From the sounds of things. Oh. Uh, they're a little banged up on the uh, on the running back end of things. So Devonta Freeman getting his first start since I don't know eighteen. Oh yeah, when he was a Falcon. Yeah, um, to cover six points six and a half six and a half yep. against the Bengals. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a pretty safe bet too. Like I said, I don't yeah. hate Cincinnati this year, um, but I, I think the Ravens are just that much better than them so. yeah if the Bengals, if the Bengals are lucky maybe they would have a closer game they might get a turnover late in the game or yeah, something like that but, but i don't think that uh i like cincy too but i think they'll be four and three after this uh, i agree week. i agree uh eagles raiders we've kind of beat this one to death too raiders <laughs> three point favorites they uh eagles take their two and four record into las vegas to face the four and two Raiders, again, uh, I, I don't. It's tough to get a beat on this game for me. Yeah. Um, but the Raiders at home, I mean, I I like them. I think it's. Uh, I think the Raiders will comfortably take it by three. That one could probably be a little bit higher, the spread. Yeah, if, uh, arguably. Yeah. I feel like it could be kind of where that Raven Cincy could be. Yeah, five and a half, six and a half five points. And a half, six yeah. and a half points. Yeah, um, I wouldn't disagree with yeah, that. Yeah, I think Las Vegas will take the boots to the old Philadelphia Eagles this week. So, Agreed. circle. All right. Uh, Rams-Lions. Uh, Do we need to take five <laughs> seconds on this game? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Jared Goff. Uh, this is a kind of a redemption game for both quarterbacks as they're playing the teams that they came from. That's also um, true. Matty Stafford's going to show up with a nice tan and a 5-1 and one record. And Jared Goff will show up pale and white with an 0-6 record. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I'm just going to circle the Rams wheels. that We don't even need to talk about it. They're going to absolutely dominate the Lions from start to finish. What, what is that spread again? Uh, 16, 16. 16 points, yeah. Any way they don't cover? No. No. I'd say there's like <laughs> a 2% chance that they don't cover. So, I mean, your odds are shit on this game, but if, if you're looking for a lock, there's one of them. So, For sure. Um, cards, Texans. Here's our second lock. Uh, the 6-0 and cards. <laughs> Texans go into Arizona. 1-5. Uh, yeah. and five. Cards 17 and a half point favorites. Ooh. We're getting into college football spreads here now. There we go. Um, Alabama. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Alabama versus Eastern Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, I think there's an even less chance that the cards don't cover that versus the Rams not covering theirs. You know, For like sure. A half a percent that they don't cover 17 and a half. The Texans cannot run with Arizona. Um, well, no, so far nobody's been able to run with Arizona. They're six and zero. They have not. Did they get their uh, coaching back this year or yes, this week? Cliff Kingsbury is back this week. So, so. there you go. Uh, Bears Bucks wheels. Tampa yep. Bay uh, Bears take their three and three record into Tampa, who is five and one. 
Uh, Bucks 12 and a half point favorites. Antonio Brown already ruled out for this game. Not that it's going to matter, I don't think. Um, hey, it might open up some more targets for Chris Godwin, who's been a disappointment on my fantasy team this year. <laughs> so hopefully yeah. that's what happens. Uh, 12 and a half, I think that's being pretty generous to Tampa. Uh, Chicago's defense is okay. Um, I don't know. I, I'd take the Bucks, but I don't know if I like them to cover, to be honest with you. 12 and a half? Yeah. The only, the only reason that I would say that they could cover quite easily yep. is if Justin Fields gives the ball away. Which, which it could happen. Will probably happen at least once. He'll have at least one turnover, I bet. So, you know, who knows? Maybe they put up 45. <laughs> and the Bears will not put up 45. Bears would maybe put up 20 at best. So they could cover, but yeah, I mean, it'll be tough. That's a risky one for me. Yeah. I, I, I like Tampa to win, of course, but I don't know if they'll cover. So tread lightly on that one. Um, <laughs> At your own risk. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Colts 49ers. Um, we talked about this one quite a bit already. Mm-hmm. Uh, 49ers, four-point favorites, and they are at home. Uh, Colts 2-4, and four, 49ers 2-3. and three. Jimmy G will play in this game. He is back. So okay. uh, that that is a... Well, I would say it's a bright spot for the 49ers. I'm not Absolutely. A, I'm not a Trey Lance guy, so Jimmy's Jimmy will get the job done, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do like the Colts. So if you're looking to, you know, maybe roll the dice, try and make a little more money on a, on a wager this weekend, uh, you can be like me and take the Colts over the Niners. Yeah. Well, and you know what? That's not a bad. Uh, that's not a bad one to uh, take either. Um, the 49ers, um, they, you know what? They could possibly win that game. Absolutely. It is at home. Yeah, they are at home. Uh, so under the lights, right? Sunday night. It is our Sunday night game. And so, you know, sometimes the lights change things, right? Absolutely, and it so, does. Um, yeah, you know what? You could. I feel like that's a 50-50 ball there on that guy. Okay. Um, if you wanted to take the Niners, you could. If you want to take the Colts, just it's, as good. Let's put it this way. If I had to take one upset this weekend, that's my upset. For sure. For sure. So. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least, well, actually it is least wheels. <laughs> uh, Monday night game, Saints-Seahawks. Saints four and a half point favorites. The Saints going into... Seattle into Seattle into uh, what's their stadium called? All I know is it's the thirteenth man. Yep, <laughs> the twelfth man. Or twelfth man. <laughs> You're thinking Roll, CFL yeah, sorry. here. Rough Riders. Why well, can't I remember? It doesn't matter. Um, Seahawks are at home. Tough place to win. Pretty noisy there. It is. Um, like you said, the twelfth man. Um, I don't think the twelfth man is going to be enough to save the Seahawks. Unfortunately. Um, Saints four and a half point favorites. Um, yeah, that's even that's even a fairly large spread. I probably wouldn't take them to cover though. How good are the Saint? How good is the Saints run defense? Bad. Their whole defense is pretty bad. They give up a ton of yards, right? And so I don't know if they're under the mantra of bend but don't break because you know, they kept it tight with Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I'm saying because maybe like they found a the run later in that game that helped propel yeah. them to the close game. Yeah, it could and be. And if, if, if they can run against New Orleans, maybe that game will be closer than we may think. I think it'll be a close game. And, I mean, if you wanted to get a little crazy again, take the Seahawks. You know, yeah. four and a half points. I mean, we've seen so many close games this year. Well, we've seen a lot of both, actually. We've yeah, seen a lot some of blowouts. Yeah. Lot of, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't think, I don't remember a season where there's been as so many one and two point games in the NFL. Right. Like, it's just been crazy, right? So, um, yeah, if you want to take a flyer, try the Seahawks out. Yeah. Those last two games, we got to, what the hell? You could take a few guys. Prime out. time. You never know what's going to happen in prime time, right? That's so. very true. Uh, MLB wheels. That's it for NFL. We're done with the NFL. Woo! <laughs> there we go. It was a marathon. Yep. Uh, MLB. Let's uh, start with the ALCS. Houston uh, against Boston. Houston leads 3 2. Could potentially close them out tonight. Do we have an update, Wheels? 
I have dun, it. Dun, dun. I have it. Top eight. Houston up two nothing. Top of eight. So the Red Sox need to stop the Astros bottom eight and score some runs in the top. Ooh. One inning to go. Risky play. I think the Astros are going to close them out. Um, if they manage to not close them out tonight, uh, our game six starters would be, sorry, game seven starters would be Eovaldi from Boston and Garcia from Houston. So we'll there see what happens. Go. That game is almost over, um, but I do like the Strohs to close them out. I, th I think they'll finally put away those pesky Red Sox who have been a thorn and a few team sides already. So. They have been. And the Strohs are a good team, right? They are. They are an excellent ball team. You can't take that away from them. <clears throat> no. Nope. So, uh, NLCS wheels, kind of a little deja vu from 2020. Uh, <laughs> Atlanta yeah. currently up three oh. two. Uh, they were in this exact position one year ago <laughs> against the exact same team, the LA Dodgers, and they blew that three one lead. Um, they go tomorrow night. Scherzer getting the nod for L.A. Uh -huh. Ian Anderson getting the start for Atlanta. Uh, last night, Chris Taylor hit three home runs. Dingers. Six ribbies. Uh, this is a guy that propelled them into the, uh, into the NLDS with his bottom of the ninth home run, if you recall. Yes. Um, yes. <clears throat> so, Chris is... Big time. <laughs> he's not all the time, but he's big time. Yeah. He hits nine in that batting order, which makes it even more shocking. Like, you expect that from the heart of the order, right? No kidding. Yeah, this dude's batting ninth. So, wow. Uh, yeah, Chris Taylor, good on you, buddy. Or, uh, must be a contract year or something because <laughs> he is playing as out of his mind. On so, paper, those Dodgers should just destroy they everybody. Should. They but... should. Um, and, boy... This isn't going to go good for either team. Um, Atlanta blows two back-to-back 3-1 leads in separate years against the same team. There's going to be questions to be answered by management at the end of that season. Mm -hmm. And L.A., with a massive payroll, if you manage to fall in the NLCS, uh, there's going to be some heads to roll i would say yeah. at the end of that season so uh tomorrow night tune in it it should be an absolute dandy um i will definitely be watching that one wheels. for sure for sure yeah i you know what i think that one's going to seven too i you uh, think so i do yeah i do i uh I think the Dodgers will pull one out again maybe a little bit closer than 11 2 like, yeah. like game 5 yeah. but um yeah, I think I like the Dodgers in Game no, Six. Nothing better than a Game Seven. I don't care oh. what sport it is. It Any is, sport. It's the epitome of all that is good in sport. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I love it. Um, NBA news: Ben Simmons, the saga just will not <laughs> die. Uh, but it sounds like Ben might be whistling a different tune when it comes to the Sixers. He met with Sixers management today said he's not mentally ready to play. Um, so Ben is going to get some professional help, whether that be therapy, medication, yep. whatever the case may be. And now all of a sudden it sounds like Ben maybe wants it to work in Philly. Um, I think once, <laughs> once he looked at his bank account, he was probably like, hmm, maybe I should make this work. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like Ben will, in fact... Put on a 76ers uniform again at some point. Um, if you listen to, I mean, since this has kind of started wheels, um, the 76ers were not going to lose this battle. The 76ers have more money. They're going to go out and play their season regardless if Ben shows up or not. Mm -hmm. uh, Daryl Morey is the GM of the 76ers. He was on the radio yesterday and said, this could very well carry on for four years. Yeah. And we're yeah. prepared for that. Yeah. So the quite next a, day. Quite a statement. <laughs> now all of a sudden the next day, <laughs> Ben shows up hat in hand saying, hey. Holy man. You know, whether 
not that mental illness is anything to joke about. But no. Whether it's real or not, um, yeah. Ben is whistling a different tune. So Daryl Morey was not giving in to Ben Simmons, and and it sounds like Ben Simmons will give in to the 76ers. So, I mean, if there is issues there, you know, get them figured out, Ben, and get back For on the sure. floor. For sure. Um, if you're trying to uh, finagle the Sixers, well, you're going to have to wait four more years. So <laughs> Yeah, something that he probably doesn't want to do. No, he might be a little poor by then. They so. have uh, they have a pretty good team, too. So you don't do. want yeah. like, like, to give up. They're 2-0. Uh, to give up that chance. Uh, did they beat the Nets tonight? Did, I think they, they were up. I think they did. Um, they did look good. Lots of games here. Philly Hold Nets. Up. Oh, they oh, lost. They, did. they lost by five. So, yeah. um, but they can run with obviously the best teams in the East, right? And, oh, absolutely. And Philly will be there till the bitter end. They still got a good team, like you said. So. Yeah, and I think yeah, I think I think that's something that kind of has to go through your mind when you kind of you know when you're playing and and uh, when you got to make a decision like that like yeah. it's like and especially when your gm comes out and says man we'll wait four years if that's the case we're not giving and them away so that becomes a decision on your behalf yeah i think um, at that point if you're the player it's like okay this got real real quick yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah. and if you're out for four years you're gonna have a hard time finding a home when you come back Oh, for sure. So, for I mean, sure. if you're out a year, guys understand that you tear your ACL or whatever the case may be. You don't play a competitive game for four years. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The the league has moved past you by that point. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, Ben Simmons, hopefully he gets it figured out. Yeah. Uh, Thursday yeah. night, Wheels, Warriors 2-0 and defeated the Clippers. Steph Curry just been shooting the lights out. Did he, he put had, up like 45? 45, yes. Yeah. He was he had 25 at the end of the first quarter. <laughs> he was like 5 of 5 from 3. Well, he was perfect for the half, wasn't he not? It could have been. I, I don't think know. he was I think he was like 9 for 9 or something. It's ridic- it was wild. It's ridiculous. I thought I, I thought that's is. what I heard. So good. Yeah, he is unbelievable. It's ridiculous. So. Yeah. Never seen a better shooter. Never. No. Nope. And not you, in my day. You may anyway. never see one again. So yeah. enjoy the greatness that is Steph Curry. He seems to be getting better as the years go on, which just when you think the guy can't get any better. <laughs> no he, kidding. You know, I mean the Warriors, yeah, they pay him two hundred and twenty million dollars and he's worth every penny. Oh. Because him alone keeps that team competitive. For sure. So for sure. Uh a shocker, Wheels, if you ask me. The Heat absolutely dominated the box Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, 137 to 95. Bucks fresh off that win over the Nets. Uh Virginia. I didn't I didn't watch the game, but I was uh <clears throat> I was flabbergasted. We need to look at that stat line because one thing that I saw on Sports Center <laughs> was that Kyle Lowry had one shot, made it, <laughs> had five points, six rebounds, or six assists, and like five rebounds again. Ugh. For a starting point guard? 35 mil a year. They're paying him wheels. Wow. Like, I, yeah, I couldn't believe it when I saw those stats. Jimmy and Butler must have went off. Somebody must have went off with points. So 2021, Hero had 27. Yeah, Hero had 27. Jimmy had 21. And uh, Bio had 20. Had 20. So they, they, they spread it around they a lot. They spread it around. game like that, all your bench guys are going to get in too, right? They were just absolutely crushing them. Milwaukee was never in the game. Yeah. Five points, one rebound, and six assists for your starting um, point guard. Thirty-five mil a year so far <laughs> doesn't look like a very good return. But we shall see. I think that was the Heat's first game of the year, so obviously it, it Kyle, was Kyle's debut in Miami. Um, yeah. I'm sure he'll turn it around. Just about as good as the Raptors' debut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, which was horrendous. Uh, let's switch gears here, Wheels. NHL. Uh, let's go through the unbeaten's. Florida for sure. Four and zero. You Still uh, a believer? You said the cup's gonna stay in Florida, but it yeah. won't be in Tampa. I think they've got a shot. They've got. They for sure got a shot. They. Uh, 
I thought they had a shot at beating Tampa last year. Uh, obviously, Tampa beat them, but yeah, um, they're a better team this year again. Okay. So, yeah, let's uh, keep that ball rolling 4-0. Hey, hey, you got me a believer. <laughs> I, I'm kind of keeping an eye on them now. So. Nice. There we go. Uh, Buffalo was 3-0. <clears throat> and They lost tonight to Boston 4-1. They did. That's more the Buffalo team we're used to seeing, so they can be checked off the list they nice. are no longer relevant i was um, very i was honestly sweating coming over <laughs> <laughs> coming over here to talk about the buffalo sabers still being perfect <laughs> so well, have no fear they lost oh, uh thank goodness st louis still three and oh minnesota three and oh same yeah division. same division too um both real I think I said it at the start. I like of the... Minnesota more than St. Louis, I believe. Yeah, but I'm also looking at the whole division saying that I think Minnesota is going to regress from last year because okay. of like that how tough that division is. Right. Obviously, they're showing me a different story at the start of the year. We're only three games in, but... True. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, obviously, um, I don't know if I would say no surprise there, but... Um, St. Louis, Minnesota, they're both looking good. Um, and you know what? If you can get off to a good start there, that you helps. know, teams that get on a tough, tough start, Chicago, yeah, Winnipeg, even Colorado. I think Colorado is like one, two, and which one maybe, is definitely is, which a is surprise. Absolutely shocking because I think they were the favorites from Vegas to win the cup this year for sure. So, yeah, and so they're getting off to slow starts. So, you know, if that's uh, that's a good start for them. That's yeah. that's nice. Your Edmonton Oilers wheels are undefeated, four and zero, and they are up currently. They currently three two over the Vegas Golden Knights this evening. They currently are. They uh, so one nothing. Uh, Nick Waugh scored for the Vegas Knights. Zach Hyman, Boom. three in, or three in four. Yes, he looking is, good. He is scoring some goals here. Looking good. Oh, and down the line. Hyman, Hyman again. again. And then Dry Sidle, I see. Correct. So those Connor, two Connor. they're trying something new since the first two games of the year. When they were two and oh, and they're they like, were hey, two let's and try oh. this. Let's try Dry Sidle with Nuge and Yamamoto. Yeah. Uh, and now we're gonna try Hyman with Pooley McDavid. Looks like it's panning out. You can do whatever you like there. It seems like it's working. Mix so, and match, and yeah, it just doesn't matter. They're, uh, I mean, I, yeah. I don't think it'd be a surprise if they beat Vegas, but um, Vegas is a decent team. They're right, a very so, good team. Um, if they can somehow manage to uh, hang on to that one and be five and zero, oh, off to a damn good start. Those are my top two teams in that division: Vegas, Edmonton, and, Vegas. Okay, yep. so. Um, yeah, if that can be an Edmonton win, that's a big push to see uh, who may be at the top of that conference at the end of the year. Could be a or conference the the finals year. preview. Yeah, you never know. You know. Uh, San Jose 4-0, and they defeated the Toronto Maple Loafs 5-3 tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what, San Jose? I did bit not. Bit of a shock, isn't it? I didn't think much of the Sharks at the start of the year. And because I believe they traded away uh, their tendy. Um, oh, goodness. Martin Jones. Mm -hmm. I believe he's in Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, and so they are playing with uh, Aiden Hill and James Reimer. Yeah, I knew Reimer went there. So, yeah. and uh, yeah. Never heard of Aiden Hill, but. Uh, he was their backup last year okay, with, uh, okay. he's a younger fella. Okay. Um, and, but yeah, they, the San Jose had struggled for kind of two years in a row yeah. there with COVID and the whole uh, shortened seasons and stuff like that. Yes. And yeah, they're looking like a dang good team. And I know that they've. Uh, Kind of rebuilt on the fly, I would say. Um, yeah, they, they didn't some... blow the team up. It's just been kind of piece by piece, right? Yeah, so. and so, uh, yeah, that's a little bit shocking, uh, the 4-0 and start. But, hey, that's, uh, again, you can, getting off on a good start like that can really propel you maybe into that playoff spot. It where ne It never hurts. Where I said that that number three and four and five in that division it's going to be tight. Yes. So 
if San Jose can get off to a real hot start, that uh, can probably help them maybe get into the playoffs later. For sure. Uh, purely opinion-based wheels, who's the best Canadian team in the NHL this year? Take 30 seconds and we'll go through this. Yeah, you know what? The best Canadian team... Obviously, from a stat standpoint, I would have to go with the Oilers as of right now. Yeah. Um, do I necessarily think that they are the best Canadian team? I don't know about that. Um, I think that there are certain aspects to the Winnipeg Jets mm -hmm. that make them a better team. Yeah. They are in a tougher division. Um, but I would have to say right now, the best team in Canada is is the Edmonton Oilers. Right now, I, I can't disagree as much as that pains me to say. <laughs> I, I can't disagree with that statement. Um, on the flip side of that, Wheels, who's the worst Canadian team? Well, it rhymes with Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Les Habitants. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens. Um, you know what? I mean, like, and I think we talked about this even just a little bit, even last, uh, last uh, on Monday, talking about the Canadian team's in the NHL. Yeah. Um, when you lose your top D man and top starting goalie, you just, that's tough. You can't come back from that. You're not just going to replace <laughs> them overnight. It's... No. Um, and they've lost Joel Edmondson recently to, uh, I think a passing in his family. So taking okay. time again. So like, right. You take another top six D man. When away. it rains, it pours, right? Yeah. And they're not putting the puck in the net. They're not a good enough team to, you know, they need to win one goal games. Yes. And they need to be 3 2 2 1. Yeah. And when you let in four, it's just not going to happen. No. Um, no, exactly. And uh, you know what? Uh, same thing. Like, you know, Ottawa is an up and coming team. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that they're the worst team in the NHL. I think that they're going to really surprise some teams. And, and they have played some tight games already. Yeah. Um, so. You know, I'd have to uh, go with the Canadians as of right I, I now. I don't disagree. The The Canadians really haven't been competitive in any of their games so far to date. No. Um, and no. like you said, losing a Carey Price, you don't replace Carey Price overnight. Losing a Shea Weber, who is arguably... They're both Hall of Famers. Um, For sure. How do you replace those guys, right? You don't. And, <laughs> and that's the problem. And yeah. Habs fans... Buckle in because she's going to be a long season, I think. Yeah, and if there's, I mean, if there's any consolation prize, if you really want to be the last place team, you get a first overall. It's Shane Wright. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there, you just keep put put a picture of him on your fridge, and every time you walk by, yeah, <laughs> it won't hurt so bad to look at the standings, right? I mean, so. they've always right, they always preach that they've wanted that number one center in Montreal. Yeah. And, yeah. Let's just put it this way. He's that. <laughs> and they're well on their way to obtaining that number one pick. So, um, last thing, Wheels, I want to touch on. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that for maybe our next show. We'll, uh, sure. we'll have time to dive into that because that's a whole story in itself. But, uh, <laughs> Let's do it. Wheels, I, we were talking about your training and. Oh, sure. uh, Let's get a little plug out there. I, I'm very okay. interested in what Wheels has cooking here, and it's for a good cause. So, uh, Wheels, sure. what are you training for? What's happening? So, what we're doing is the Lloyd Minster Health, uh, Lloyd Minster Region Health Foundation, okay, um, is uh, running a uh, live stream, I guess, podcast okay. cast of. 24 awesome people okay that are training for a 12 hour run go as far as you can in 12 hours and let's raise some funds and your target for a 12 hour run is what so my 12 hour target that i have given my what we call our seasoned coach, who mm -hmm. is my coach that is getting me to my goal. Yeah. Is my goal is to run two marathons in 12 hours, <laughs> which is about 84.63 kilometers. Insanity. So I love it though. <laughs> I love it. It's for a great cause. Yeah. So 
This money is going uh, towards the Health Foundation. Their goal is to raise about five hundred thousand okay. uh, dollars on December seventh uh, for some uh, medical imaging and uh, different types of things for the um, for the hospital. hospital. Okay. Uh, you can bring us back a link that we can for sure plug and yes. uh, for yes. whoever's interested in this and maybe interested in donating to the LRHF for this more than worthy cause and and if wheels can pull off 85k in in 12 hours <laughs> man <laughs> somebody buy this guy a gift card for a massage cuz he's going to need it yeah. um that that's crazy dude but i think it's really cool and yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to tune in just to watch you beetle your ass <laughs> on a treadmill for 12 hours straight. It's going to be nuts. Yeah, well, right. and like I said, too, like, um, you know, I always do like to push myself a little bit physically here and there. A little bit. And this is definitely something that is over and above something that i have never done before yeah that's more so. than a little bit of a push i would say but <laughs> that being said um i think that's pretty cool and best of luck to you my friend i i think you'll crush it so. absolutely and yeah so you can do that and i'll get the link for you as yes. well yeah bring and, that back uh, and yeah you can look at doing um whether you want to do a uh, lump sum donation mm -hmm. or even uh you know, me telling you that my goal is 84.63 kilometers. Yeah. Um, you know, you can put a dollar amount on the certain kilometers I do. As hey, well, maybe. Uh, which is kind of cool. Maybe I can have an over under for how many clicks wheels is going to oh, hit. Oh, there you <laughs> go. And I'll start taking bets. I'll be a bookie for the one event. And we'll go from there. We'll see what happens. <laughs> and we'll have a little, a little wheels going around on a track. Hey, there you go. I like it. I like 4. it. 4.63 kilometers. Insanity. Here we go. I love it though. <laughs> uh, that being said, we're uh, we're out of time, my friend. Um, thank you again for being here. I hope to have you back very, very soon. Anytime, buddy. Anytime. Very soon. You just call. Um, all right. I'm going to take you up on that. So <laughs> don't be surprised when your phone rings next week. Um, <clears throat> that being said, uh, thanks to Wheels. Thank you to all of you for making us a part of your day. We appreciate it. Um, as usual, catch us here, YouTube, Google, Apple Podcasts, Audible, you name it, we're out there. Um, and on that note, we're out.